Like every year in the spring, the Sultan Marathon des Sables sets up camp in the heart of the South Moroccan desert for a week-long foot race under extreme conditions, where contestants are required to be self-sufficient for their food. Justifiably considered to be the quintessential ultramarathon event, this unique endurance race is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. I think we were avant-garde back in 1986 with our 23 pioneers and their metal frame backpacks and three and a half kilo sleeping bags. The ninth edition, when we searched for the Italian for 10 days, the torrential flooding during the 24th. Of course, there are many intense moments like these that leave a mark, along with some remarkable people, some special encounters. This very special state of mind that combines human relationships and athletic performance attracts more and more competitors every year. We were lucky in that for 27 to 28 years there was a gradual progression and we managed to take it in stride. This year with an additional 300 competitors, meaning 30 percent more than in preceding years, we hope to do as well. Conscious of the values that built its reputation, this 30th MDS relies on the best features of previous editions. We've remained true to stages set up, seven days, six stages, 250 kilometers once again in the province of El Rashidia, which I'm particularly fond of because of its diversity. The 30th edition effect has attracted quite a few people. We've been taking entries online for two years now. People registered within two weeks. We reached 1,500 applications, and that's when we decided urgently we had to stop. Coming from 49 countries, including China, New Zealand, Russia, and even Guatemala, 1,330 contestants, including 209 women, managed to come away with their race number at the end of the checkup day, which for the first time includes fitting a GPS tracker to all backpacks. Two principles are involved, the safety principle, so that we know exactly where they are at any given time, and second, so that people can follow a person's progress. We'll know where they are every 10 minutes. It's a first in the middle of the desert. The holder of the title, Rachid El Morabiti and Laurence Klein in the women's category, are among the favorites, along with some famous newcomers, such as the British polar explorer, Sir Reynolds Fiennes. For me to run when it's hot, with a weight uh, is a new experience, and I'm not certain if it will be good or bad. The first stage spanning 36.2 kilometers from Jebel Irs to Jebel Tijget is the opportunity for participants to limber up and gradually get going. Due to heavy rainfall in the preceding few weeks, many of the competitors will discover an aspect of the Sahara unknown to them, enough to dilute the initial difficulties with a rather unusual touch of color in the desert. We're truly happy, it's great. It's going fine, my back aches a bit, but... Oh well. A year and a half training for a one-week race. Oh yeah, it's great. Very quickly among the male participants, a threesome led by El Morabiti, followed a few lengths behind by El Moaziz and Al Akra, sets the pace that very few others are able to keep up with all the way to the finish line. Only one European competitor manages to keep the pace with them for the greater part of this stage, the Spaniard, Chema Martinez. For this road running specialist, competing on sand is a new experience. My goal is always to run with those in the lead. 
For me this year, it will be a learning experience. I feel good when I'm running with them, regardless of the terrain, whether it's sand or desert. The only difficulty for me is the mountains. I'm learning a lot, and my aim is to always fight to win. On the women's side, the struggle is unexpected, with Elizabeth Barnes's first surprise victory ahead of Elizabeth Howard. Now, just uh, to recover for tomorrow. <laughs> Laurel's clan finishes this leg in third place and looks like she might be in a position to reclaim the title that has eluded her in the last two editions. We'll take a look at their ranking. I'm going to get a good rest because I think there's going to be hard work ahead of us all week. From the very start, the Marathon des Sables has always been an occasion to bring together extraordinary teams. This 30th edition confirms the rule with the presence of La Seine Ansal alongside Harold Lang, a blind contestant seething with energy. I'm really excited because I'm quite good as a runner and I'm fit. But I have no experience with the sun, the desert, the heat, and all the fuss about salt tablets doesn't help. As for Lassen Ansal, who holds a record-winning 10 of the 18 MDSs in which he has competed, acting as a guide is a new experience, demanding a different approach to the race. I try to let him know what's in store for the 100 meters ahead. The dunes, the mountains, etc. We don't use a lot of words, but it's enough for us. As it turned out, the outcome after the 31.1 kilometers of the second stage was a repeat of the first. In the lead, the same strong men and the impressive domination of the Moroccan duo El Morabiti and El Moaziz, with the Jordanian Salame Al Akha in the middle. At the finish, Rashid El Morabiti chalks up a promising second win. The best European performance this time comes from Danny Kendall, a British competitor who finishes fifth. It's a good stage today. Lots of climbing, lots of jebels. Yeah, a bit more technical. Yeah, it's good. The women's ranking is unchanged compared with the previous day, but this time with Barnes and Howard entering the top 25 of the overall ranking. Quite an accomplishment competing against Laurence Klein, who again finishes third. Competing alongside you, I think it's amazing. I was like, oh my god, she has to climb up now. <laughs> when one hears about a marathon in the Sahara Desert, the images that come to mind are dunes and a boundless horizon. At the MDS, the truth on the ground is quite different, like the ascent of Jebel Otfal reminiscent of a roped climbing party in the high mountains. Very hard.
Home almost. Second stage. Wow. Here we go. Guatemala. Woo! It's marvelous. It's worth suffering for. It's beautiful. At the starting line of this third stage that covers 36.7 kilometers, the atmosphere is like the weather, just fine. At precisely 9 a.m., Patrick Bauer releases the impressive human wave, which unfurls towards the infinite horizon. After two days of running at a temperature of sometimes more than 40 degrees Celsius, only 42 competitors have pulled out. At every checkpoint, medical staff is available to see how the marathon runner's health is faring. Are your feet okay? They're in their shoes. This permanent contact means an intervention can take place on the track or later at the bivouac. This impressive medical facility fulfills its function to perfection. 1,400 competitors is really incredible, especially here. We've increased the number of caregivers, and now there are 72 of us. Of course, we followed suit with equipment and organization. The clinic has been enlarged. Everything is done on a bigger scale. I'm going to inject some aozine in it to dry it out. Might hurt a little. Lots of problems with feet, dehydration, although the weather is not excessively hot this year. But anyway, the climate is somewhat aggressive for anyone who's not from the region. In the lead, Rashid El Morabiti confirms he's in control and that his opponents can't keep up with his accelerations at the end of each stage. I felt really good. I kept some energy for tomorrow's long stage, but I truly felt good and I left at my own pace. Further back, El Moaziz, Al Akra, and El Akkad have to content themselves with an honorable mention. Mohamed Ansal too has to admit he can't keep the pace due to problems with his knees in spite of being a five-time winner of the event. In the women's category, the big surprise once again comes from the astonishing Swede Elizabeth Barnes, who turns out to be untouchable with three victories in three stages. I did the MDS in 2012 and um, it was a great experience and I wanted to come back to see, um, to see what I could do. I knew that this year would be a difficult year with a big field and um, some really good runners, so I did not expect to, to be on the podium or anything. By the evening of the long stage, competitors, whatever their position in the ranking, have found the pace that suits them best. I think the top women are competing with the men, although I think the, um, the, the top runners are still the Moroccan men. At sunset, the atmosphere in the camp is still peaceful, and much of the time is taken up by preparing food, before another night sleeping under the stars. At the start of the 91.7 kilometer long stage, the wind makes an appearance. Today we'll do our best to get in there in time, but we can't be sure that we will. Each contestant must use his or her individual mental and physical abilities to deal with this added difficulty. Among those who are part of the cast today on this longest day are the Franco-Canadian team Transavia, supporting the Joëlette. 
This curious all-terrain vehicle is used to carry a special needs child to see the Marathon des Sables from the inside. Come on, guys. You're a bit slow. Faster, faster. We got a mile to go. The second wave is always set aside for the top 50 contestants in the overall ranking and starts out three hours later. I want to wish you good luck. There are seven checkpoints. Check the water replenishment points so that you manage your efforts from start to finish, please. It takes the fastest runners only 20 kilometers to meet up at the El Marche Pass and overtake those who have opted for a more leisurely pace. Bravo. Bravo. The ambitions of contestants are becoming more apparent at each checkpoint. Some want to get the stage over and done with as quickly as possible, while others are desert fanatics whose sole aim is to push their abilities to the limit. It's, genial. it's a hard day today. I have to walk all the way. My right leg is not doing too well, so um, I have to walk uh, all nine kilometers. So it's going to be a long day. Champions, legends, lovies. Longest day, longest run we're ever gonna do. The difference in pace of the two groups becomes even more clear along the difficult passages, such as the descent of Jebel Otfal. Nothing seems to slow down those who run to win, but there's always a risk of injury. Elizabeth Howard, Laurence Klein, and Salome Al-Akra face this bitter experience. Compelled to slow their step, their chances of being on the podium are seriously challenged. In the meantime, El Morabiti, still accompanied by El Moaziz, leaves his footprints on the dunes and makes his way past some stragglers. As the sun disappears over the horizon, he is once again the first to cross the finishing line ahead of El Moaziz and El Akkad, after just eight hours and 39 minutes and a solo finish. This is a good result. I'm the lead veteran and I'm in second place. It's a great result for me. Almost a whole hour goes by before we see Chema Martinez arriving in fifth place, followed by the two best French runners, Christophe Le Sceau and Antoine Guillon. A lot of sand and a lot of wind against us. It's really tough, and they're going to have a hard time back there. The important thing for everyone is to cross the finish line. Wow, that was really something. Very sandy and flat as a pancake. In the women's class, Elizabeth Barnes, too, goes the distance. I'm just really happy to finish and uh, feel relatively fresh. Well, I don't know, but... <laughs> this time, she arrives ahead of Anna Marie Watson and Natalia Sedik. For contestants still on the course who will be spending the night in the desert, the organization offers them a moment of relaxation as they go through checkpoint five. I like to create special moments like these. This is when we can show that outside of the race, there's also an atmosphere a state of mind that's in keeping with what we want to be the hallmark of this race. My 
hips hurt, my knees hurt, my back hurt. Everything hurts. Pain that will be endured for several more hours before this interminable fourth stage is over. The longest ever in the history of the Marathon des Sables. Forty-two point two kilometers is the distance that separates contestants still in the running from the finish line of stage five. The long night has left its mark, but completing this stage is a victory in its own right for those who made it. I feel like superwoman now, <laughs> so I can, I can go home and I can do a lot of things that I wouldn't have tried before. Uh, the Marathon de Salve was a lot more like a, a long form of torture compared to my sport. Uh, alpine skiing, you know, des descent. I thought the race would gradually get more difficult, but right from stage one it was really tricky. As for yesterday's leg, it was unbelievable. At least now I know what I can do and I'm starting out today with a brand new strength. For the runners aiming for a place in the overall ranking, the stakes for this last stage before the medals are awarded are clear, since the greatest difficulties are behind them. But they still have to tackle the Merzuga dunes before reaching the finish line. In spite of a temperature of nearly 40 degrees Celsius once again, this final marathon soon begins to look like an extended sprint. While the Spaniard Chema Martinez was able to keep up his pace over the distance and chalk up the best European performance ahead of Lusso and Kendall, no one and nothing managed to stand in the way of Rashid El Morabiti. The former protege of the Ansal brothers gets full marks, winning all five stages. He retains his title and also wins his third MDS, ahead of Abdelkader El Moaziz and Aziz El Akkad. In the women's category, Elizabeth Barnes accomplishes a similar feat and wins her first Marathon des Sables. I was actually planning on coming for a podium place next year, so uh, <laughs> I've done it a year early. <laughs> She takes 20th place in the overall ranking, leaving the British runner Anna Marie Watson and the Russian Natalia Sidik well behind. When they cross the line, the finishers of this 30th MDS have managed to overcome all the difficulties, and more importantly, to fulfill their dreams. <laughs> <laughs> their minds and their shoes are still full of sand, but most of them are already thinking of the start of the next edition. I'm just so happy, so happy. It was pure joy. Thank you, everybody. It's the most beautiful experience I've ever had. Thank you to everybody. It's the most beautiful race in the world. Thank you. I made the best day in my life. Thank you. Thank you very much MDS 2015. The final touch of this week in the Moroccan desert is the quintessential charity stage, under the auspices once again of UNICEF. 
This year, the key word for the UNICEF stage of the Marathon des Sables is Team UNICEF which has been developed by the organization worldwide to create a social movement in favor of the enforcement of children's rights. This stage doesn't count for the overall ranking, but it's a great way of showing that solidarity and running are inseparable at the Marathon des Sables.